If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2. I want to talk to you today about wise men and fools. Wise men and fools. If you have a bulletin and want to follow along with us, you can follow along. And the outline is as follows. Number one, the wise men. The wise men. Number two, the foolish king. Folks, you can be in office, you can be a leader, you can be the highest position uh, of any in a corporation or, you know, have a lot of money. You can have everything, but if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you're a fool according to the Word of God. And we will talk about that here in just a few minutes. And then the true king. Folks, there's only one true king. And that is Jesus Christ, our Lord. He was the true king. And I love the Christmas season. I really do. Next week, we'll be preaching from Luke chapter 2 of the actual birth of Christ. Uh, but I wanted to get a sermon in just about where we are kind of as a country and uh, what is going on, uh, not revelation, not anything like that. Uh, but folks, there's two things that we have to realize uh, being a Christian these days is going to cost you something, okay? You are, you're going to get persecuted in some form or fashion. People are not going to like you speaking the truth. And we need to speak the truth, but we need to speak the truth in love. That's what Jesus did. The second thing is the world does not like our lifestyle. It does not like what we stand for, and they're just going to be against us, okay? And and there is a clear, I think the line drawn in the sand is clear nowadays. I think it is obvious who are Christians these days, and it is obvious who is not. So there's going to be this battle going on in our lives, basically for the rest of our lives, of good and evil. And folks, we need to stand for good. We need to stand for the Word of God. We need to stand for the truth of the Word of God. And you will see that in this text. Number one, the wise men. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, the wise men came from the east, uh, came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. And we know by Scripture that Bethlehem was about five miles uh, south of Jerusalem. And that's what amazed me about the, uh, the scribes and the Pharisees. To be in the hub of Christianity in Jerusalem, in the city of David, and to know that five miles away Jesus was going to be born but yet they did nothing about that. They did not acknowledge Jesus for who he is and who he uh, was going to be. And Bethlehem literally means bread of life. And we know in the Gospels of John, uh, Jesus was described as the bread of life. You know, these wise men were Gentiles. Uh, They studied the stars uh, they were, were called the Magi, uh, had to do with astrologer, astrology. And again, I don't think it was in an evil way of any sort. It was just that's what they did. Uh, they were probably well off to travel as far as they were traveling. And to travel, and, and we have always associated uh, the three gifts as there were just three wise men. But from what I could read and what I interpreted in Scripture, Jerusalem and the people there were just almost afraid of them, okay? One was because they were different from everybody else. They weren't the same color. They didn't wear the same dress. They didn't have the same language in many ways. So we are always kind of afraid of strangers or people. And I think the other thing was that there wasn't just three of them. I believe there was a handful. I think it could have been anywhere from six to ten people in this traveling uh, uh, group. And most of them were from the Far East, uh, the Babylonian era. 
Uh, they were smart. They were very intelligent people. Uh, they uh, really majored in science and in math. So we're not talking about, you know, people uh, that were not well-educated. We are talking about high-ranking officials that, that uh, probably had studied the Word of God. And I kind of sometimes wonder, you know, where did they get the star thing? And I go back to the Babylonian times, a King Nebuchadnezzar, and folks, I'm telling you, Daniel set a precedence. He was alone in that kingdom. He rose in that kingdom to be second in power there. And I believe uh, Daniel and the Old Testament had many things uh, to say about uh, who the wise men were and what they were looking for. And when you think of the star, uh, we think of the largest star uh, as we look up in the sky. But folks, I believe this star, the, the star of Bethlehem, was, was a large one that, that could be well seen from anywhere on earth. And it would stick out, folks. It would stick out. And it, was, it would guide those wise men to where Jesus was. And we're talking probably some uh, biblical historians and some people a lot smarter than me said, they could have been traveling six to nine months to follow this star. And I've always asked myself, you know, what, what made them do that? And folks, I believe it was a divine appointment from God. I believe it was the Holy Spirit leading them. See, they didn't have Google Maps, all right, back then. You didn't get your phone out and try to figure out where you were going, all right? Even in navigation in the ship's of those days, it was by the stars. So we see uh, this first part, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Folks, that's what we do every Sunday. Every Sunday. The reason we are here is to worship God. The reason we are here is to hear from God. The reason we are here is because God has made a difference in our life. And folks, I am telling you, we need to worship God. Even if no one else is worshiping God, we need to worship God. And, and it doesn't have to be just here. You can worship uh, in your Bible study at home. You can worship. And, and I love, Steve, I love the Christmas music. You know, I, I, I turn on and in the radio stations, and I go straight to the Christian ones that are playing Christian music. Some of them are not playing Christ, uh, Christmas music. And I'm one to call in and say, hey, get some Christmas music on, all right? <laughs> Why? Because it tells a story. That, By the way, you guys that were doing the intro, to that, that intro was um, outstanding. That was just, to the song, and folks, it just gets you ready for worship, and we are here, and Here's what I think Satan loves to do. He loves to keep us from worshiping. When we are looking at individuals, when we are wondering who is here and who is not here, when we are wondering what is going to happen today and not focusing on, folks, we need to focus on God and we need to focus on Jesus. They came to worship. And they came a long ways to worship. Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah 29. Verse 11. Jeremiah speaking to the children of Israel who were in captivity. And he said in verse 11, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. You know what's missing in our society today? Peace and hope. It's missing. We are not at peace with ourselves. We are not at peace with others. Many are not at peace with God. And we need that peace that comes from knowing the Prince of Peace. And there is hope. Folks, I am telling you, if you have hope in your life, you will go on. You will not give up. You will not think this is not going to work. We 
have a, a God that gives us hope, then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. Oh, folks, I've heard people say this. I've heard people say, I don't think God is even listening to me. That is not a true statement. God hears your every prayer. God loves you unconditionally. God is there for you. If nobody else is there for you, God is there for you. Folks, we need to be that hope in this hopeless world. Then you will call up on me and pray to me. I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Well, folks, we do a lot of things with all of our heart. We put our lives into a lot of things. But I am telling you, if you want to know Jesus, he is there for you. If you don't want to know the will of God, he is there for you. If you want to search for that peace and find that peace and find that love that he has for you, he is there. Look at uh, Proverbs 4. Proverbs 4. We're talking about wisdom. These were wise men. Wise men. Proverbs 4, verse 5. Get wisdom. What does that tell me? It doesn't come automatically. It doesn't come with age. Okay? I do believe older people are more wise than younger people, but not in all instances. Okay? I've, <laughs> well, I better not go there. Wisdom doesn't come naturally. You have to get it, is what this is saying. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Do not forget, nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Where is wisdom? In the holy word of God. That's where wisdom is. Folks, this is God's instruction booklet to us. This is God's breathed Holy Spirit uh, inspired word of God. And the closer we get to this book, the book, the Bible, the closer we get to God. And wisdom, and it's, it's, a, it's a very short definition. My definition is knowing the will of God is wisdom and doing it. You can know what the Bible says, but if you don't do it, you are not wise. Get wisdom. Do not forsake her. She will preserve you. Love her and she will keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing. The main thing is wisdom. How do you know what to do? Folks, you got to talk to God in prayer. You have to seek God in the Word. It's not always taking a poll with people around you. Folks, I've had Christians give me bad advice. Not very often, but I have. You have to go to the Word of God. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. In all you're getting, get understanding. Wisdom and knowledge and understanding all go together. Exalt her and she will promote you. She will bring you honor when you embrace her. She will place on your head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory she will deliver to you. Folks, we need to be praying for wisdom. All situations of life, give me wisdom, God. God, hear my prayer. And these wise men, I am telling you, they were seeking Jesus. And folks, I believe with all my heart that wise men still seek Jesus. Second thing I want you to see is the foolish king. We saw the wise men, and now look back in our text, the foolish king. Matthew chapter 2, verse 1, or verse 3, excuse me. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem was with him. Why would he be troubled? Because th this word, the king of the Jews. We are seeking the king of the Jews. Well, he was self-proclaimed 
king of the Jews because he married a Jewish woman. But he was from the branch of Esau, if you go back to the Old Testament and see where his roots, roots come from. So he was threatened by this statement. And it says, And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. He didn't have an idea because he didn't seek God. He wasn't looking for God. He wasn't looking in God's word. But he had scribes and Pharisees uh, that knew the law. And folks, I'm telling you, there are over 300 prophecies of Jesus' birth in the Old Testament alone. So it's there. It's there for them to find if you seek. Verse 5, so they said to him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you shall come a ruler, notice the capital R, who will shepherd my people Israel. And he is quoting, this, this is quoting Micah chapter 5, verse 2. And that's just one instance of where we know Jesus was going to be born. Verse 7, then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, and by the way, why do you do it secretly? Because you're up to something. Okay? I don't want to be a part of a secret meeting, folks. I really don't. And when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared, and he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search carefully for the young child, and when you have found him, bring him back, bring him back word to me that I may come and worship him also. Can I give you a saying? Liar, liar, pants on fire. Herod had no intention of worshiping Jesus. He wanted to kill baby Jesus. But folks, we are under the divine protection of God. And Herod, when you think of his upbringing and who he was, he was uh, really cruel. Uh, he was paranoid. Uh, he was married. Uh, historically tells me, I, I was looking these things up, he had been married nine times. He had eight, one of his wife killed and her two brothers because they, they, uh, he thought uh, they were treason. They, he thought they were trying to uh, overrule him. So you can see, and, and even in his death, he said when he dies, he wants every prisoner that's in jail at his death to be executed. So we are talking a ruthless, bloodthirsty, murdering, you know, just this guy was nuts. He was crazy, all right? And folks, you, we have to understand, you look at our world today, folks, Every day there's a shooting in the United States of America. Every day someone is dying because you looked at somebody wrong or you cut them off in traffic or you fired them. And folks, that's the way the world is. Herod is representation of the world and what we have become. Matter of fact, he was desperate in what he was wanting Look at Matthew 2, verse 12. Then being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. The wise men knew he was up to something. They sensed that this, this, this is not right. We don't know for sure what he's going to do, but we are not going to tell him where uh, Jesus is, and we are not going to show him the way. Now when they had departed, he, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and stay there until I bring you word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Folks, God told them, you need to go to Egypt. That's where you need to go. Folks, when God tells you to do something, you are wise as a Christian to do it. Verse 14, and when he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt and was there until the death of Herod. 
that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I called my son, capital M, capital S, Jesus Christ. And he is quoting Hosea 11, verse 1. Do you see how the Old Testament is tied into the New Testament? It is a commentary of uh, the New Testament. Then Herod, verse 16, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise men, was exceedingly angry. He had anger issues. Folks, people these days, I see more people angry at things. And folks, we as Christians, we can get angry at sin, but we are not supposed to be angry at people. Jesus loved people. And he sent forth and put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem in all its districts from two years old under, according to the time which he had determined from the wise men. He was so messed up. He was so satanically uh, 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 influenced that he put to death every male child that was two and under. Folks, that is deranged. That is evil. That is pure evil. That is who King Herod was. Psalm 14. Psalm 14. Look at Psalm 14 with me. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Folks, I'm telling you, you are a fool if you don't believe in God. I'm telling you what the Bible says. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not calling you out. I'm telling you what the Bible says. You can have everything, but if you die without Christ, you lose. You lose everything, folks. And then it says, they are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There's none who do good. Folks, we were all born sinners. We all sin. That's not a question. But we need to ask for forgiveness of our sins. We need to uh, leave our old ways behind. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. We need new things. The Holy Spirit guiding us, living a life for Jesus and worshiping him. And the Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there are any who understand and who seek God. Oh, folks, if you will seek God, you will find him. He's not playing hide and seek with you. Man, I used to love that game, hide and seek. I played it with my grandkids. And Lori gets on because I'll hide somewhere real good. I did it this week. I hide real good. I was in the shower. <laughs> oh, Kylie comes around that corner and peeks out, and I go, Wah! like that. I'm telling you, she bounced off the bathroom door and went out, and she said, Papa, you scared me. <laughs> oh, folks, God's not playing hide and seek with you. God wants a relationship with you. God wants a personal relationship with you. God is with you every day of your life. God changes my life. He changed my life. And we are who we are when we seek God. Verse 3, and they have all turned aside. They all together have come, become corrupt. There is none who does good. No, not one. I'm telling you, folks, I want to do good. I really do. But still there's that thing inside of me called my old nature. Anybody got one of those? And every once in a while that old nature will come up. But it, immediate when I say something I shouldn't say or do something I shouldn't do, that Holy Spirit says, Mike, you just messed up. Right then I know. Man, I got to get this right. I got to get this right. Folks, he wants you to find him. He is there for you. He loves you. He loves you with all his heart. So we see the wise men. We see the foolish king. And now let's see the true king. 
the true king. Look in verse 9. Matthew 2, 9. And when they heard the king, they departed. This is the wise men. And behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them. Oh, folks, the star will guide us. Jesus will guide us. God will guide us. The Holy Spirit will guide us. Went before them until it stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. I've been out looking for things before we had the G, you know, the, the signals and all these things going on. When we had the old, remember, remember the paper maps, the atlases that we used to have? And folks, we've been lost a couple of times, Lori and I. And when you find where you're looking, what you're looking for, you are exceedingly glad. These folks, these wise men traveled for months. They used and spent their own money. They stayed out in the hot. They stayed in the cold. But they found the Christ child. Exceedingly rejoicing with great joy. And when they come into the house, and remember this was nine months or, a, or maybe even a year after Jesus was born, they saw the young child with Mary and his mother and fell down and worshipped him. Oh, folks, every once in a while, we need to just literally fall down and worship Jesus Christ. Worship Him. You can worship Him anywhere. Where two or three are gathered in my name, I am in the midst. And do you realize you can worship Him alone? Because if I read my Bible right, there's four of you. Me? Me? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So we can have worship services. I don't need everyone, and I love public worship. I love to come together on Sundays. But every once in a while, we need those come to Jesus moments to where it's just us and Jesus, and we are doing business with Jesus. And they fell down and worshiped him. And when they'd opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Two things, I believe. One, I believe they were symbolic. The gold is what you give a king. The incense is for God. When you think of the incense in the prayer altars, and uh, the myrrh was to anoint the dead. And that was a picture of what was to be. And also, those gifts that were given were very expensive. We know what gold is worth nowadays. And all three of these gifts that were given, and they were going to be able to live a year in Egypt on these gifts that were given to Mary and Joseph. Then being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed and went to their only own country another way. Folks, God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit were leading the wise men, and they were leading... Uh, uh, Mary and Joseph. Philippians 2. Philippians 2. Verse 9. Philippians 2, 9. Therefore God has also highly exalted him, talking about Jesus, and given him the name which is above every name. Jesus is his name. Jehovah God is salvation, is his name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven, of those on the earth, and those under the earth. Listen to me, folks. One day, everyone will bow before God. And I just shouldn't do it today. Today. I just soon do it today is later on. I'm, we're all going to do it later on. Even those who are lost are going to do it. They're going to bow before God and acknowledge him as God and will acknowledge Jesus as king.
But I'd rather do it in a day when the Holy Spirit just says, hey, would you worship me today? Would you just bow before me today? Would you just come before me today? Folks, I'm all for gifts. I'm all for, oh man, candy, Christmas candy, sun, lights, trees, being with family. But sometime this Christmas season, we need to bow before our King and our Savior. Just us and God. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Mark 8. Mark 8, our last scripture. Mark 8. Jesus himself was speaking in the Gospels. Mark 8, 35. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the Gospels will save it. So folks, we have one of two choices. We can give our life away. We can give our life to Jesus. Or we can just keep on going like we are and we will lose I'm, in eternity, we will lose, folks. We will spend an eternity away from God. Verse 36, for what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? King Herod, in worldly standards, reached the epitome of what everyone in those days. He was the king. He was rich. He had smart people around him. He lived in a palace. He had all these things, everything that you would think he, want, he would want. But folks, I'm telling you, he died and he spent an eternity in hell because he did not choose Jesus. Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For his soul? Folks, there's a lot of person that has sold their soul for things, for things. Even in the world we live in today, there are three responses to the good news of Jesus' birth. One is anger and rejection. That's what King Herod did. Anger and rejection. Two is indifference. That's the scribe and the Pharisees. He may be a king, but he's not my king. And three, worship and joy, like the wise men did. Folks, the best gift you could receive today is the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. If you're here today and you don't know Christ, the best Christmas gift you could receive is salvation. To know that you know that you know when you die, you would go to heaven. Christians may need to rededicate their life to Christ today. Maybe they need to come for baptism. Maybe they come to join the church. Whatever God has told you to do, I pray you would do it today. Father, thank you for the Christmas season. God, I just thank you for the story of the wise men. And God, I pray we would all want to be wise. God, wisdom comes from you. Wisdom comes from your word. And God, I pray that we would just get closer to you this Christmas season. God, I pray that we would just see it. Yes, we need to celebrate Christmas. We need to be with family. We're nothing wrong with these gifts. But God, it shouldn't be stressful. God, help us to look at you. Help us to reflect on that manger. Help us to put ourselves in the place of those wise men that had traveled so far and they found Jesus. God, I pray we never get over that, ever. So God, this is your church. This is your invitation. I pray you do what you choose to do this day. And God, we will give you the glory and the honor and the praise. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Would you stand to your feet? If God has spoken to you in any way, would you come?